Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be doing a trailer breakdown for Episode 5. Also, we got some major breaking news to do with a new Superman show coming to the CW. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so we're going to be breaking down the trailer, but the big thing we need to talk about... Superman and Lois is coming to the CW. I'm not just talking about the characters, they are having a whole show. So this was just announced today via Deadline, I do believe, so go check out their article, that Superman and Lois is going to be a TV show that the CW is currently working on. Obviously, I wasn't suspecting they were going to do a Superman show, but to be honest, I think I would be annoyed if they just did a Superman show. But considering it's Superman and Lois, and that it's different from Supergirl, I'm cool with that. And I'm really excited about this, because I love Lois Lane in the Arrowverse. I think Elizabeth Tullock does a fabulous job as Lois. You know, in the brief amount of time we've seen her, I've been really impressed. And also, obviously, I love Tyler Hoechlin as Superman. But my only worry was that if they did a Superman show, would they cancel Supergirl? And no. They're not cancelling Supergirl, which is a great sign that this is going to be different. They're not just going to be copying what Supergirl has done. So this is a spin-off, obviously, off of Supergirl. It's Supergirl's first spin-off. But also, you know, it's kind of to do with Crisis. I guess, like, whatever happens there is going to impact however this show, you know, begins. And it seems like this confirms that Superman, at least this version of Superman, played by Tyler, is not going to die in the crossover. And also, Lois is going to be fine. So, will this be set on Earth-38? Or, in Crisis, is it going to merge with Earth-1? And that's, you know, where they're going to be now. I think it's still going to be Earth-38, if I were to hazard a guess. But, let's talk about the Superman and Lois show so obviously we had the show with Dean Kane way back in the day that was Clark and Lois I guess it's gonna be a little bit similar sort of in the same vein but I like the title Superman and Lois I like how it's not just Clark how it's Superman I think that's a good title and obviously like I said Tyler and Elizabeth they're great together and so this is in development and this comes from the X executive producer and showrunner of The Flash, Todd Helbing. So, I'm a fan of this. I like that Todd Helbing is coming back. I know a lot of people don't, you know, fully go for Todd Helbing, especially with season four of The Flash, which wasn't very good. But I really like season five. I thought he did a very good job with season five. So overall, I've been impressed with him and also his brother. He did season three as well. They were working on it together. So, I don't have a problem with Todd Helbing, I think some people will have a problem with that, and they will be more sceptical, but I kind of like Todd Helbing, although I didn't really like season 4 of The Flash. So I think this is a good way to get into this, because it will keep that same vibe that you've had on The Flash, that you've had on Supergirl, because it's again Greg Berlanti once more, but also Todd's returning to the Arrowverse, and I, I like it how he's been so intertwined you know throughout the years and then he's going to be writing this he's going to be you know the showrunner for Superman and Lois I think it's a great great opportunity and I just can't wait to see it to be honest and so apparently Superman and Lois revolves around the world's most famous superhero and comic books most famous journalist as they deal with all the stress pressures and complexities that come along with being working parents in today's society so that's a big reveal they are gonna have a kid in this they're going to be parents so we're obviously going to deal with some of that but mainly it's going to be you know their lives you know and how they I guess balance like Superman and Clark Kent and obviously Lois as well because Lois is in the title so it's going to be a massive thing that she is in the title so she's going to be a lead character and I like the idea that we have two leads I don't know we haven't had that on the CW like Arrow it's Oliver The Flash it's Barry Supergirl it's Kara obviously Legends is completely different it is an ensemble show, but then you got Black Lightning, it's Jefferson. Then you go over to Krypton, it's Segal. Then you go over to, say, Titans, it's an ensemble. Doom Patrol, it's an ensemble. Stargirl, the new show, it's Stargirl. Swamp Thing, it's Swamp Thing. 
So we haven't had a sort of two people led show since maybe Clark and Lois. Like it's been a while and I think that's a really exciting thing personally. So let me know what do you think about all this in the comments down below. So let's go ahead and break down this Supergirl trailer. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This trailer doesn't excite me that much. I feel like the trailers are getting shorter and shorter or they you know what, I think it's just these episodes because they're sort of waiting for Crisis. I don't know why Supergirl's not involved in Crisis right now. Like, all the other shows are so Crisis heavy. To be honest, like, last episode was a very mixed bag episode. I'm kind of being a little bit let down compared to how great Arrow is right now, which I never say because, you know, Supergirl's one of my favourite shows. But, yeah, I don't know about the... The way they're taken this season, I think they should have been crisis heavy by now at least. And this trailer is sort of just, it feels like another filler episode and I'm using quotations. You can't see me right now but I'm using them because it's not really that important. It's just kind of just villain of the week stuff. But that's just me and what I think about this trailer and the trailer just doesn't excite me as much as some of the past trailers. That's what I would say. So. We get this first shot, let's break it down, obviously, I'm excited for the episode, it's just the trailer didn't make me that excited, you know, that happens time to time, and then you get a really good episode, so no problem about that. But, so we got this detainee, I think this might have been the person from last episode, I, you could, I could be totally wrong, I don't know, but she barely popped up if it was her, the person that blew car out the window. She looks like she's got meta cuffs on, or like alien cuffs, whatever it is, dampening powers. So, it could be her. Kind of looks like her. But, she says his code name is Riproar. So, talking about this guy in the next shot. So, obviously, the villain of the week. He has normal hands, he looks like a human. But then he's got sort of Dr. Octopus tentacles coming out of him. Metallic tentacles is basically Doc Ock, which is kind of funny. But kind of cool, I guess. But Riproar is completely different in the comics. Yeah, he has four arms, but he's got four real arms. Maybe this is, like, with inside him, like, because of the technology aspect of this season. Maybe he has that technology implanted in him, like, naturally, I guess. Maybe he's from the future, I'm not sure. But anyway, so Riproar in the comics is actually from Apocalypse. So he's a lot to do with, like, Darkseid and New Genesis. Which is really, really cool, but this is a completely new version, as you can tell by the trailer. It's completely different. He's, you know, all more like Cyborg Superman, and he is basically metallic. But the best comparison, obviously, is Doc Ock, although that's Marvel. So, I guess it's kind of a bit of a letdown that he's not more like the comic book version, because he's pretty cool, and he is very powerful. Obviously, this is going to be very powerful, this person but it's completely different, and yeah, I'm not so sure about it. But anyway, so he's just going to be around for like one episode, so it's not such a big deal. Then we got this shot of Alex and Supergirl, and Alex is talking about how we have to, you know, stop them. And then we move on, and we get a shot of the screen. They're obviously explaining what's going on. He's got this fusion cannon. This is going to be like a thing that can destroy everything. And then we got this shot of everyone in the DEO, Kara's sort of venting about how they have to stop them, and we get this, obviously his arms are CGI, looks kind of a bit weird, he's just sort of suspended in the air, but yeah, kind of cool I guess. Then we move on, probably the best shot of the trailer, we got them turning around, that being John and Kara, Kara's hair sort of flying, it's in slow motion, looks pretty cool, and then, I, I'm, I don't know about Brainy this season man, like, I liked him at the start with Nia, but then they sort of made it all weird and everything. And now, I feel like a lot of the stuff when he's in the DEO, he's just explaining stuff. Kind of similar to what I'm not liking about Lena right now. In that they are basically plot devices that they are being used to explain stuff and be like, Yo, this is happening and Brainy is talking about the loss of life could be in the billions. I swear they say that like every few episodes. I don't know, maybe I'm being too cynical about this, but I'm just a little bit let down by last episode, so maybe my expectations are a bit lower than they should be. Maybe it's going to be a really good episode. I'm sorry that I have to be down, 
But I have to tell the truth, this trailer doesn't excite me that much. Maybe it excites you, that's great. And we move on to the next shot, so Chaos is reigning in National City. you got Alex there, you got this woman on the left. She's got those obsidian contact lenses in, you can tell that. we got this, this is Rip Roar, obviously. He is, you know, cracking into this electric box, I guess. I'm not sure what it is. Then we got Supergirl, she's flying through the city, trying to stop whatever's coming. We've got Alex shouting, being like, get away. Everything is going to shit. You guys need to run right now because the last shot of the trailer is a tsunami and the tsunami is big. It's coming in fast. It looks like the one from Interstellar. It's pretty freaking big and yeah, it's coming in very fast to National City, which is kind of mad. So looking forward to seeing how they actually, you know, end that tsunami. Probably more excited for that than, you know, the actual villain and some of the stuff they're doing but yeah so thank you guys so much for watching this video if you're excited for Superman and Lois like I am please be sure to leave a like and a comment also give your opinions on the Supergirl trailer I'm sorry that was a little bit down on it I just didn't like the trailer that much so I'll see you guys later goodbye I see